kick the tires and light the fires, folks. We're back again with another raft of ridiculously authentic war film details. From carefully selected pieces of combat and uniform-oriented detail, to tactics and battle sequences that literally mirror the real thing, war movies can often end up getting a lot wrong. Sometimes they hit the bullseye. I'm Ewan, this is War Culture, and here are 10 more insanely accurate war movie details. Number 10. Piper Bill, The Longest Day 1962's The Longest Day has to be one of the most meticulously crafted war movies ever made. An epic retelling of Operation Overlord and the sea and airborne landings that took place on June 6, 1944, the film was based on Cornelius Ryan's book of the same name, which was a huge international co-production. The film is slightly sanitized in comparison to the more visceral Saving Private Ryan, and Hollywood heavyweights like John Wayne distract ever so slightly. Make no mistake, The Longest Day boasts a sometimes impeccable level of attention to detail. Most famously, during its depiction of the Battle of Pegasus Bridge, the first flashpoint, D-Day. The battle was instrumental in securing a bridgehead for the Allies to break out of the beaches and also to cut off German reinforcements. The operation was British-led, with Major John Howard leading a glider-borne brigade to secure the bridges. Howard was played by actor Richard Todd, and Todd himself had actually fought in the Battle of Pegasus Bridge as a member of the British Airborne, and was one of the soldiers to relieve the real-life Howard that day, meaning another actor had to play Todd in the film. The Longest Day recreates the order of battle at Pegasus really nicely, but one of his best flourishes has to be the arrival of Lord Levat's commando brigade. Levat, who was mistakenly dressed in white in the film along with wielding a Manlika rifle, he actually used the US M1 carbine in real life, arrives alongside Piper Bill Millen, who is playing Blue Bonnets over the border. This is the same tune he was heard playing specifically as they rolled up to Pegasus Bridge, with the other tunes Piper Bill played that day being Highland Laddie and The Road to the Isles. Number 9. Hiding in Plain Sight – The Big Red One 1980's World War II epic The Big Red One follows an unnamed sergeant and his squad from the arid temperatures of North Africa to their desolating arrival at Falconel concentration camp at the end of the war. Based on Samuel Fuller's own wartime experiences, the film's title is derived from the nickname given to the US 1st Infantry Division, which was involved in the fiercest fighting in the European theater, starting the war in North Africa with Operation Torch, before moving on to Sicily, France, and fighting in Central Europe. As a film, it exudes authenticity. This is due in no small part to Lee Marvin's influence, lending gritty legitimacy to the aforementioned sergeant. Marvin was another veteran of World War II, having served as a sniper in the Pacific Theater. Side note, Marvin is one of my favorite actors of all time, and by all accounts, one of the coolest guys from the era of filmmaking. Gone way too early. As for The Big Red One, one of its finest historically accurate features ironically comes during one of the movie's most unbelievable sequences. After the squad is trapped in the Kasserin Pass, they dig trenches deep enough for them to stand upright in, hiding in plain sight as the oncoming Panzer Division rolls over their heads. As unbelievable as it seems, Fuller's company really used this tactic, the director confirming that the screams that can be heard from the hidden soldiers also mirrored the actual series of events. Quote, When we were in those holes and the tanks were rolling over us, it was our only chance to scream all the terror out and not be heard. We got it all out in those holes. Number 8. Private Piles Hidden Rounds Full Metal Jacket Stanley Kubrick's Full Metal Jacket depicts the horrors of war and then some exposing the dehumanization associated with armed conflict in devastating fashion. Chief among the 87 Vietnam War films harrowing subject matter is the mental deterioration of Vincent D'Onofrio's private lead pile during basic training. Mercilessly hazed by fellow recruits and tormented by the psychopathic drill sergeant Hartman played in iconic fashion by R. Lee Ermey, pile suffers a mental breakdown. The private's decline culminates in tragedy when the recruits eventually graduate. Leonard murders as Hartman before turning the gun on himself. A sequence depicting Pyle's death is so disturbing that it's entirely justifiable that one of the key questions at the heart of this demise seemingly goes unanswered. Just how did he smuggle the ammo in? And Kubrick takes the time to answer this question. While on the firing range earlier in the movie, Pyle doesn't cock his weapon after reloading, indicating that there are still rounds left in the magazine. Most viewers pay no heed to the apparently empty clip discarded by Pyle, but by pausing the 
film at the correct moment, it reveals the glint of unused bullets. You'd better believe those are live rounds, Joker. It's an incredible piece of inscrutable detail, but it should come as little surprise. This is Stanley Kubrick we're talking about. Number 7. Lieutenant Keg's Grenade Pins – The Thin Red Line Woody Harrelson's untimely demise in The Thin Red Line initially appears as though his character was simply a victim of defective equipment. Terrence Malick's 1998 World War II epic, in my view one of the finest pictures ever made, boasts a large ensemble cast. Among them is Harrelson, who makes a brief appearance as Lieutenant Keck. Despite the unintentional nature of his death, Keck goes out a hero. Under heavy Japanese fire, the lieutenant attempts to pull a grenade from his belt, accidentally yanking out the pin instead. With the explosive attached to him, Harrelson's soldier makes a split-second decision, hurling himself away from his squad to shield them from the blast. A gloomy piece of minor detail in the movie actually lends stark clarity to the circumstances behind Keck's end. The soldier can be seen using a knife to bend his grenade pins in an earlier sequence. This was a common practice in World War II due to the pin's stiffness, a safety feature to prevent accidental detonation. Bending the mechanism and it would be easier to pull them out faster, extremely handy in a firefight, but with potentially deadly consequences. Number 6. Marksmanship Expertise – Enemy at the Gates Set amidst the Battle of Stalingrad, Enemy at the Gates was heavily embellished with theatrical effect. Chief among these inaccuracies is the central narrative threat, a deadly game of cat and mouse between Jude Law's Vasily Zaitsev and Wehrmacht sniper Irvin Koenig, who many historians argue was likely an invention of Soviet propaganda. However, Enemy of the Gate still features several exemplary pieces of accurate detail, thoroughly immersing the viewer in Stalingrad's hellish conditions. Koenig's irritated eye after being blinded through his scope is a notable highlight, but the film's finest example comes in the opening sequence. This scene sees Vasily meet Joseph Fiennes' Commissar Danilov, the two lone survivors in a sea of Soviet corpses. Commissars were political officers as opposed to soldiers, and Danilov highlights his own complete lack of combat experience by attempting to fire at a group of Germans with an empty rifle. His military ineptitude is further underlined by his failure to adjust the rear sight on his modern Legant, which is set to aim at targets much further away. Number 5. Siege Tactics The Last of the Mohicans while The Last of the Mohicans does take some liberties with historical reality, Michael Mann's picture features some spectacularly realistic battle sequences. Set during the Seven Years' War between Britain and France, an early flashpoint in the film sees the British outpost Fort William Henry come under fierce attack by the French forces. Popular historian Dan Snow has provided a breakdown of the sequence on his own YouTube channel, threatening the film for its accuracy and highlighting just how much effort went into recreating an authentic cinematic depiction of these frenzied battles. The French forces used siege guns to suppress the British cannons firing from an elevated position on the fort's ramparts. This covering fire allowed their forces to dig trenches, also known as saps, up to the fortification's edges, with the goal of blasting a hole in the outer walls to allow their forces to pour through. The use of saps allowed the French army to inch their heavy artillery forward, simultaneously firing mortars over the top to pound the enemy into submission. Number 4. The Umbrella-Wielding Major Carlisle – A Bridge Too Far 1977's A Bridge Too Far is a criminally underrated war movie. Depicting the disastrous Operation Market Garden, the brainchild of British General Sir Bernard Montgomery, Richard Attenborough's outing features an ensemble cast and a gloriously enveloping atmosphere. Cornelius Ryan again, the author of the source material. An iconic piece of detail featured within the film is carried by one of the supporting cast, an element that has likely invoked numerous confused double takes, Christopher Good's Major Carlisle is seen to be wielding an umbrella in several sequences during the Battle of Arnhem. Carlisle's character is actually based on a real-life soldier, Major Digby Tatum Warder, a World War II combatant famed for carrying an umbrella into battle. Digby could never remember military passwords, the story goes, arguing that it should be quite obvious that the, quote, bloody fool carrying an umbrella could only be an Englishman. This comical explanation was adapted into the scene depicting Carlisle's in film death, although Tate and Water himself survived the war. Further unbelievable accounts recall the Major sprinting to rescue a soldier under heavy fire, calmly reassuring him that they would be safe under the cover of his canopy, and using his brolly to also disable an armoured car by poking the driver in the eyes through a viewing slot. When quizzed upon the logic of carrying such an object by fellow officer Pat Barnett, B is meant to have coolly responded with, quote, Oh my goodness, Pat, what if it rains? What a legend. Number 
3. Scope Check – Lone Survivor Featuring Mark Wahlberg as titular lead Marcus Luttrell, Lone Survivor is a riveting and visceral watch. However, it's hard to ignore the film's dubious historical accuracy, with numerous aspects of the account on which it was based having been disputed. Fortunately, director Peter Berg redeems any historical shortcomings with some seriously authentic firefights, highlighted by a minor moment before all hell breaks loose. As Luttrell prepares to fire the opening shot that sets the mountainside battle into motion, Wahlberg's Navy SEAL produces a great piece of immersive detail. Primed to shoot, the marksman can be seen very slightly shaking his head up and down. This seemingly innocuous action is a means of establishing parallax in the field of a magnified optic. This allows the shooter to check whether the scoped reticle and the target behind it are actually on the same focal plane, essentially whether the sight accurately lines up with the target. Number 2. Corporal Upham's Chin Straps – Saving Private Ryan Saving Private Ryan features so many unbelievable touches of accurate cinematic detail that the real challenge is picking the most memorable version. Today though, we're spotlighting a particularly tiny one involving Corporal Upham's helmet. You see, the majority of US forces depicted in Saving Private Ryan wear their M1 helmets without the chin strap fastened. This was due to a contemporary widespread belief that the wearer could suffer a broken neck if the helmet were to be struck by a bullet, some units even went as far to expressly enforce the practice. Appropriately, the only exception to this rule is Greenhorn Corporal Upham. Jeremy Davis's character is soon told to unfasten his potential neck breakers by the other members of Captain Miller's squad, drawing further attention to his non-existent combat experience. And number 1. Herrick's Pupils Contract – We Were Soldiers A visceral adaptation of the Battle of Le Drang, Vietnam War epic We Were Soldiers received a claim for the grounded and realistic nature of the battle sequences depicted within the film. Randall Wallace's 2002 offering zeroes in on the men involved in the war, intricately highlighting the devastating emotional toll of armed conflict on both its participants and their families back home. This is due in no small part to just how authentic the combat feels within the movie, with numerous subtle elements utilized to lend an unshakable and harrowing air of realism to the proceedings. The film's crowning glory in this respect actually arrives in a fairly early sequence. After their unit is lured into an ambush by an enemy scout, Matt Blugas's Lieutenant Herrick is among the early casualties. The instant that life leaves Blugas's character, Herrick's pupils can actually be seen dilating. You see, upon death, the brain immediately ceases sending signals to the rest of the body. This includes the ciliary muscles in the eyes, the tissue that controls the constriction of the pupils, causing the reflex action that can be seen here. And those were 10 more insanely accurate war movie details. Be sure to drop the video a like if you enjoyed it, and subscribe for more if you're new. Either way, I've been Ewan, this has been War Culture, and I'll hopefully catch you next time. Bye!